can go ahead. It is appearing. Yes. Maybe I don't know whether it is my interest or uh, whatsoever. I try to make it so colorful so that I can distract the participant and then skip the slide. So just uh, all those uh, uh, conditions keeping away. Uh, once more, uh, I'd like to congr congratulate uh, Edoxia Research Center India, especially uh, Dr. Sakyas, uh, both Mr. and Mrs. Dr. Sakya for organizing together with other uh, team, uh, organizing team, this excellent event. Uh, and I, in particular, uh, probably because of my associations with uh, Edoxia for last couple of uh, year in virtual, but uh, more actively in last couple of months, uh, uh, has uh, indeed uh, given me an opportunity to bring my knowledge and expertise a little bit, uh, uh, not exactly in my field of uh, uh, real super uh, specializations because sometimes in this type of um, technical avenue, I personally feel that uh, uh, as an invited speaker, uh, the general aspects which is uh, good to all participants might be uh, good from my side to share and then later on in the specific technical sections there will be the presenter who will try to focus on a specific area so my is on something which is a lost thing and which uh, many a time as a researchers are every one of us has forgotten in our uh, journey and that is understanding the intellectual property right in research and innovations. Uh, forgotten journey or somebody try to exp uh, explore this journey and we should uh, try to explore it. And if you try to see the highlight of my presentations, then I'll basically try to have uh, three um, uh, sections uh, like uh, party, there is little bit of typo, please do pardon me. Party is more to do with the introductions of uh, uh, myself and my institutions. Part B is uh, uh, regarding understanding the intellectual property right. And then part C is uh, more to focus on importance of intellectual property right in research and innovation. Uh, basically, uh, I will not be doing justice if I don't try to share about my country background um, because many a time a small Himalayan country is a dream of every individual to visit and explore. And then this COVID-19 has given this challenge uh, to be isolated further, a small country to be isolated further. So. Uh, Bhutan is a small country, you can just see a dot uh, in a world map and then if you just try to see, we do take uh, spicy uh, spicy food, basically we take spicy food, uh, which is uh, quite uh, difficult to bear for somebody. And if you try to see, we have a typical dress pattern, even I'm wearing our national dress just now, and then uh, if you try to see our building structures, our uh, building structures also has its unique uh, identity and then we need to maintain our traditional unique uh, identity and our currency is Neutrum and Chetrum, which is as of now one to one with uh, Indian currency. Then let me go to uh, second part. Like uh, I say, it is a small country because our uh, population is just 0 0.7, 0 0.7 million. And we are really a small country with uh, appreciable uh, GDP. But uh, in our case, we don't usually try to measure our uh, uh, success uh, with uh, GDP, but we try to measure with uh, GNH, uh, main indicator for our uh, socioeconomic development. And then if you try to see our land uh, areas uh, span is uh, uh, quite small. And then the interesting part is that uh, 
71% uh, uh, of our country today is covered with forest and then our constitution's mandate at any time we should have 60% forest coverage and that is why we declare ourselves and then we are we are pretty sure that we'll be declaring through and through that Bhutan as a carbon neutral country. And this is a, a country, Bhutan, a small country sandwiched between a big uh, uh, neighbor, China, and then our uh, immediate neighbor, India, uh, Bhutan. And then we have uh, Royal University of Bhutan, uh, where which is uh, placed uh, at uh, capital city, Thimpu. And then under Royal University, we have Constituent College and then the Affiliated College. And my college is the Namgyal Engineering College, which is at uh, Extreme East. And this is the organo of uh, our organizations, like our university is headed by a chancellor, <coughs> excuse me, uh, where our chancellor is His Majesty the King of Bhutan. And we, we have a vice chancellor and under that we have different colleges. So our college, Jigminamgil Engineering College, under president, we have three deans and I am currently working as a dean of research and industrial linkages. And under me, there are a center for appropriate technology, technology and innovation support centers and center for lighting and energy efficiency studies. Now I try to go with an example. If you try to see this picture, this picture speaks uh, uh, quite uh, uh, interesting hidden message. And basically for academics, like uh, things has changed, uh, things has changed a lot. And then if you try to see, I, I particularly try to focus on this picture last time in one of my presentation also that if you try to see, we can send somebody sleeping and who knows in today's presentation also somebody might be sleeping. But uh, this is how our new normal happened to be. So current, uh, whatever we are facing has to be treated as a normal and then there are challenges ahead and are we prepared for those challenges? And future, we have to treat it as a new normal and we should work uh, towards this new normal collectively. And now going to understanding the intellectual property right, uh, uh, things are very simple, like um, uh, in intellectual property has uh, uh, typically four domains like patent, copyright, trademark, and then industrial design. These are the four typical part. And then these are something which uh, are many a time missed by a professional, especially researchers, maybe academicians to forget about other work of societies even we as an uh, academician and then learned platforms uh, people's uh, expertise in our own domain we forget these things uh, many a time that is why sometimes when we talk about our research paper we talk about uh, plagiarisms of uh, 60 percent 70 percent 80 percent i am trying to give that a bigger figure because uh, why that is happening and these are uh, something I think we are not aware of the intellectual property right, a right that we have and the right that other holds. And then if you try to see that um, when you talk about intellectual property, uh, it is nothing big, uh, no rocket science or discoveries, intellectual property is just a creations of mind. It is our creations of mind in terms of our inventions, in terms of our literacy and artistic work, in terms of any symbol, names, image uh, that we use for our commerce and so on and so forth. So definitely we should keep it in mind that uh, intellectual property is a very much a powerful tool for economic development. And we want uh, as an individual, as a society, as a nation, we, we are focused that economic uh, development has to be, and the wealth creations has to be the priority of our nations. And that is not being used actually. 
uh, to optimal effects uh, in all countries that is as per uh, the um, references especially from world intellectual property that i was trying to refer and then especially the uh, developing countries are the one who are, who are really lacking in this that means we have a potential for a, uh, economic development as well as wealth creations, but those are some things which we have not exposed. And is it not this uh, COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 is a situation where we can explore this and then capitalize on our own uh, intellectual properties? And then now, if you try to see that, uh, when you try to highlight about the categories of intellectual properties, basically it is uh, broadly classified into two areas, like industrial properties, uh, which is actually from the Paris Conventions, uh, uh, they th thought that protections of industrial property is important in 1883. So it, it was actually felt necessary in Paris Conventions in 1883, and then industrial property was acknowledged from that time, and followed by the Bern Conventions in 1886, uh, where copyright is uh, seen as another things which need to be protected. And these two actually are the broad uh, classifications of uh, intellectual property. And when you talk about the industrial property, we talk about patent, we talk about trademark, we talk about industrial design, and we talk about the geographical indications. And this, if you try to see, is crucial in terms of industrial uh, properties. And then when you talk about the um, uh, copyright, we talk about literacy work, we talk about film, music, artistic work, architectural, design we talk about our research we talk about our publications everything falls up under copyright and if you try to see this uh, this is uh, in this whether you talk about in industrial property or whether you talk about copyright that is closely associated to all of us at our individual level at our at our professional level at our uh, national level and also at uh, global level so this is something quite uh, important for us all, all to really uh, see. Now, the why actually the intellectual property uh, right or intellectual property need to be uh, uh, think of? Because it is through intellectual property we can have the capacity to create and invent. So, Creativity and inventions um, is uh, something which 